Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to dress up Dollar Tree canvases. Today you have some great ideas to display your creativity with these super versatile canvases. And since they cost less than a lot of other canvases, they're great to learn on. And if you're wondering if you can really make a discount thing like this look marvelous? Yes, you can. And I'm going to show you how. No one will ever guess how much or little you paid for these decorations. But it might be fun to see them try. So come with me to the craft table and we'll get started. Dollar Tree and similar discount stores can be a huge opportunity for crafters. With your creativity, you can combine a few of their inexpensive items to make something totally new, like these. I use the 11 by 14 inch canvases, but they have so many different shapes and sizes available. But these stretch canvases can be modified to become frames with a technique known as reverse canvas. If you want to try the reverse canvas technique, you'll need a craft knife, a pencil, scissors, sandpaper, and a ruler or measuring tape. And make sure you get a canvas with a frame, not a canvas board. All right, so if you can't find these at your local uh, Dollar Tree, because they are super popular, I have another inexpensive source for these in my materials list below this video. There's actually lots of sources for these at a great price. And I was very excited to find these metal words in the craft area. I'll show you how to incorporate them on your canvas too. Or you can cut out words and phrases um, from my free download and use them with or without the metal pieces. And I'll share a tip on how to lay out your final designs, including the metal words on the computer. We'll cut some designs on iron on vinyl, so some basic vinyl tools will also be helpful. And then I'll use a quick easy press to adhere the vinyl to the canvas, but you could also use a household iron. I experimented with how to decorate the metal too and have some good tips to share. This metallic paint and a small round sponge brush are magic. <laughs> and speaking of paint, you can also use chalk paint and a foam brush to paint the wood. I'll show you how to add details with a surprising tool, baby wipes. <laughs> One of my favorite tips. I'll also use some decorations from the holiday aisle to add finishing touches. They snip apart with wire cutters and hot glue holds them in place perfectly. Now let's make some great canvas decorations together. Step one, prepare the canvas. Protect your work surface with some butcher paper or scrap paper. And before editing your design, you need to determine the right dimensions for your canvas and the image you have in mind. So flip your canvas over so you can see the back. Use a pencil to lightly trace the size inside the frame. Use a craft knife to cut the canvas just outside the staples. Be careful, they're sharp. Lay the separated canvas face up on your work surface. Measure the pencil shape. Mine is nine and a half inches by 12 and a half inches, since I'm going to decorate it in landscape orientation. Now smooth out the canvas and then paint the front if you'd like. I used red chalk paint with a foam paintbrush. Paint side to side or up and down instead of switching your strokes around for a nicer look. Just be consistent. And this covers the pencil lines nicely, but two coats will look best and then let it dry for about an hour and add the second coat. Now let's spiff up the frame. All canvases are made differently and you may or may not need to sand the wood to smooth out the surface. I used white chalk paint and a foam brush, but you can use another color, of course. Paint the front and the sides, but the back will be covered so you don't have to paint that. And do wear gloves to avoid getting your hands all messy. And you can use a baby wipe to rub part of the frame for a weathered look. Or use baby wipes to apply the paint to achieve a faux stain look. While the canvas and the frame dry, let's make the decorations. I'm going to add some metal letters to the canvas in addition to the vinyl. They're pretty as they are, but I also painted some with a metallic gold acrylic paint and a small round foam brush. If you use a dabbing motion all over, it gives them a hammered metal look. Aren't these pretty? 
and then let that dry too. Now for the designs. Step two, get your canvas designs. You can use any vinyl designs that you like for your canvas, but I've made several designs that you're welcome to use for free. To get them, go to jennifermaker.com slash 445 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs on the page by searching for design number 445 and then click it to download the zip file. There is a collection of holiday designs and then layered designs for year-round decor. I'll add the holiday designs and the happiness comes from within SVG to my canvas. If you're not sure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com slash SVGS to learn how to unzip and upload files. You can cut these vinyl designs on pretty much any cutting machine. I'll show you how to do it on a Cricut cutting machine in this video. Step three, prepare and cut your design. Here's how the canvas designs look in Cricut Design Space. You can zoom out to see all of it by clicking on the minus sign on the lower left. Click ungroup and then delete any designs you don't want to use. Let's make the magic one. We'll replace believe with the metal word that I decorated, but leave it for now. And I'll make the happiness comes from within version just with vinyl. There's an easy way to visualize the whole project on the screen. Click the shapes icon to the left and select a square to add it to your canvas. Open the lock icon at the top. Then type in the dimensions for the inside frame piece. I'll put 12 and a half inches for the width and nine and a half inches for the height, but yours might be different of course. And now it's a rectangle. To make sure this shape won't be part of the design, use the operation menu to change it to guide. It's still visible, but you can see everything else and it won't get cut out. Drag your design onto the guide where you think you would like it. If you want to make it bigger or smaller, make sure the lock icon is closed this time and drag a corner of its bounding box. I want to see how big it will be when Believe is the same size as the metal version, so I set the width to 9 inches. That will work well. I can adjust the layout a bit during assembly. Since I'm not cutting vinyl for Believe, I'll use the eye icon to hide just that layer. I'll change the color to white. Now we want to see how the happiness sign looks in the guide. Move Believe out and place the other decal into the guide. It looks a little small, so let's increase the width to 11 inches. Now they're ready to go. Select the correct machine in the top menu and click Make It to move it to the Prepare screen. On the Prepare screen, make sure your designs look right. Then, because we're cutting on the back of the vinyl and transferring it to the canvas, turn on Mirror by clicking the green toggle underneath each mat. Typically, we always want to mirror iron on vinyl. Click back on the first mat, then click continue to move to the make screen. Under set base material, I'm choosing everyday iron on. I usually like to change my pressure to more for a cleaner cut. Make sure your Cricut fine point blade is clean and in clamp B as indicated on the screen. Put your iron on vinyl shiny side down on a green standard grip machine mat. Use a brayer to get the vinyl as smooth as possible. Then load the mat into your Cricut and press the flashing button to begin cutting. When the cut is complete, do not unload your mat right away. Instead, check that your blade cut through the vinyl by pulling up on a corner of the vinyl from the clear liner carefully. If it did not cut well, press the vinyl back onto the liner, press it all back down again onto the mat, and tap the middle button again on your Cricut to have it recut the design. And it'll be in the exact same position. Once you know your vinyl has cut properly, go ahead and unload the mat. Flip it over and peel back the mat to release the vinyl to avoid wrinkling and creasing it. Repeat for the other mats. Trim the excess vinyl and then weed around the letters and designs. And don't forget to remove the middle of the letters too. Step four, assemble your reverse canvas. We'll add the vinyl before putting the canvas back on the frame. 
I'll show you the steps with the Believe sign. Plug in and turn on your heat press or iron. I'm using a Cricut Easy Press. Check the Cricut Heat Guide website at jennifermaker.com slash easy press for your settings. I chose Everyday Iron-On under Heat Transfer Material and Cotton Canvas under Base Material. Once you click Apply, Cricut will let you know what settings to use with your press. For the Iron-On Vinyl, I set my temperature to 340 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds. If you're using a household iron, set it to the cotton or linen setting. Now let's clean up the canvas edges. Using a pen or pencil, trace the outer edge of the frame on the canvas. Then cut the excess canvas with scissors. Place the canvas face up on the pressing mat and lint roll the, the design spot to remove any debris and lint. Once the press is ready and the light is green, cover the area for the vinyl with butcher paper to protect your press from the paint. Preheat it for five seconds to remove any moisture that might interfere with your vinyl adhering to it. Remove the butcher paper and then gently fold the canvas in half both ways so you have light creases and a center point. Check your design for any stray or missing pieces, and if it looks good, carefully bring the sides together, matching up the vinyl edges. Lightly crease the liner at the top and the bottom, and don't worry, it won't hurt the vinyl. Place the weeded design where you want it, liner side up. You can put the frame, metal word, and any other decorations into position so you can see the end result. And you can line up the creases to help keep the words even. Remove everything with a decal and then replace the butcher paper and press for 30 seconds. If you're using a Cricut Easy Press, you'll also need to flip it over and press for another 15 seconds. Once the liner feels cool to the touch, you can carefully remove it. Now to put it all back together. Lay your frame face down and using your hot glue gun, make a line of glue at the top edge of the wood. Lay the canvas face down on the glue and hold it until it sets, making sure the canvas is centered and there are no wrinkles. Glue your way down the sides, keeping a bit of tension on the canvas so it's taut in the frame. And then glue the bottom edge. Once dry, flip it over and you should be able to see your design through the front of the frame. Add the metal word in place using a good craft glue. I'm using Barely Art Glue here. Hot glue dried too quickly on the metal to adhere it well to the canvas. It really made a mess, in fact. Cut apart the other decorations using wire cutters and hot glue them wherever you like. I added some holly to the corners. If you're making a simple layered image like my happiness design, follow the same steps, just layer your design. The pressing instructions are a little different than our other layered iron-on vinyl projects, but we found this technique most successful. Set your easy press to 340 degrees Fahrenheit and 30 seconds. I usually put the layer with the most vinyl down first, so I'll start with the layer that says within. Use the creasing technique I showed you earlier to align it on the canvas, line your side up. Press the first layer for 30 seconds using firm pressure. I'm using an unpainted canvas this time, so I don't need to protect the press from paint here. Allow the carrier sheet to cool before removing it. This is not the usual recommendation, but it worked best for this canvas. Save the carrier sheet from this first layer. Now take your next layer and position it over the bottom layer. The bottom layer may have shrunk just a bit, that's normal. Just line up the next layer as best you can. If any of the first layer's vinyl isn't covered by the carrier sheet, use the piece you saved to extend the protection. Make sure all the vinyl is covered and won't touch your easy press. Then press again for 30 seconds, flip it, and press for another 15 seconds. Allow the liner to cool and carefully peel it off. Then follow the tutorial from earlier in this video to put your reverse canvas back together. 
Not as hard as they look, right? These decorated canvases look great leaning on a shelf, but you can also add a picture hanger just like this to the back if you'd like. These are very easy, lots of options really. Now, if you're looking for more holiday ideas, these are also featured in my DIY Christmas decorations under $10 project. You can find more simple, beautiful projects over at jennifermaker.com slash 443. If you have more canvases on hand, I have lots more ideas. If you prefer full coverage, I also have a tutorial for sublimating photos and images onto canvases to get the super stylish wrapped look. That's available at jennifermaker.com slash 418. And my Dollar Tree Cricut Projects collection has another fun way to combine paint and vinyl on canvas over at jennifermaker.com slash 383. And I have even more Dollar Tree inspired projects in my annual countdown to Christmas, the Merry Maker Mingle. Sign up free at merrymakermingle.com for free projects, tutorials, designs, and all the details you need to craft a beautiful Christmas this year. If you have any questions about dressing up Dollar Tree canvases, please leave your question below this video, or better yet, ask me over in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. <music>